Hey y'all, in for H and H here. Well, something arrived today in the mail. Found it on the doorstep. Let's see what we have here. It's from New Hampshire. And by the way, pretty heavy, pretty heavy box. This might begin a new series. Oh, popcorn. <laughs> yeah, the illustrious popcorn. Well, let's see what we have. FTX One Optima. So, a very good friend of the channel, one of the gentlemen who has made the videos possible for you to watch all these years, Andrew Fiertek. N1YLO, November 1, Yankee Lima Oscar, gifted this to me so that I could provide unbiased videos. You know me, I like to show the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I can't do that if I have a manufacturer or a, a retailer providing the rig, and well, I've had a bad experience with that. So, because of the Patreon program and people like Andrew who donate to that each month uh, and do what I what I call uh, they're they're what I call long haulers. They support the channel on a long term basis. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to continue the content. Because of them, I'm able to do the reviews without any bias. No, I don't work for Yesu. I'm, I'm currently shooting a Kenwood series right now about the TS-890S. It's a tutorial series that's available for S9 VIP members of my Patreon support team. So there we go. Uh, just to give you a look there. So it's the FTX-1 Optima. I'll get this unboxed and set up, and then uh, we'll do a little initial on-air listening with it maybe you know just power it up and uh start the process of putting it through its paces this will more than likely be the beginning of a tutorial series for this particular radio well it will now you can see here the optima version has an amplifier back here that essentially makes it a 100 watt base station but this front part you could almost call a face plate <laughs> but yeah, it removes, but it's not just a faceplate. It's the FTX-1 field, so you can take the front part with you as a field radio for soda or poda. And you have six watts available to you using a rechargeable battery that snaps on the back. Uh, of course, you can provide it with 12 volts, and you can have 10 watts. So uh, let me get it unboxed and set up. You know, I'm gonna let you go ahead and see me open the box for the first time. Here we go. Trusty Yesu operating manual and the Yesu map that we've all become familiar with. Got one hanging on the wall over here. I'll show you. There it is. That dates back to 1991, when I bought my first Yesu base station. So we've got the power cable, the battery. That's the that's the battery I was referring to that uh, can snap to the back of the radio when you go portable. And uh, looks like we have a. This is a power cable. This one here, okay, let me explain. This power cable is for connecting the amplifier, the Optima part, okay, the uh, SPA1, to a 12-volt source, 13.8 technically here. And it uh, looks like it's the same connector that Yesu traditionally uses, so I'll just be able to plug in using the cable that I powered the FTDX10 with. This is a cable if you want to use something like a bio -NO battery um, out portable. This would then give it the ability to produce 10 watts. Let's see, what else do we have in here? Some rubber feet, a mic clip, 
And uh, well, <laughs> if you look here in the box, mic. So there's where the hand mic is. And then, oh, some spare fuses. Those are always handy. Yeah, while I'm on the subject of fuses, let me mention something to you. Here's a freebie for this video. All right, th these are the fuse holders that hold these blade fuses. And something you should know, I get this question a lot. So I'm gonna put it in this video. Sometimes people say, hey, my radio was transmitting fine and all of a sudden it starts cutting out. When I transmit and, and talk, it'll stop. It'll just power down, it'll shut off. Open these fuses, fuse holders, take, both, take the fuses out. Look for a little black soot looking stuff on the fuse blade, take a pencil eraser to that and then put the fuse back in. And in fact, what I like to do is put the fuse back in the other way, opposite of the way it came out. Just, just uh, you know, to seat it differently. We call it reseating. Uh, yes, that can happen here. There, there's always a little bit of arcing going through the context of a fuse. And that builds up that soot looking stuff, carbon, which is, uh, well, what a resistor is made out of, some of them. So it acts like it's a resistance. And what happens is as you pull the extra current during transmit, it causes enough of a voltage drop that the radio is starved for power. So this is something to always be aware of, these fuse holders. If you ever have an issue where the radio seems to be turning off by itself, uh, usually during transmit, check your fuses. Just like I say, pull them out, check for soot, erase it with a pencil eraser. All right, looks like we've got some bubble wrap here. I feel the fan. Okay, there's the back of the SPA1. That's the amplifier. Looks like we've got a, a connector over here for a 144 and 450. So that's your two meter and 70 centimeter antenna connection there. There's where the power will plug in. And over here we have antenna one and antenna two for HF and six meters. And then a ground, by the way, always ground if you can. You know, when, you're, when you run this as a base station, you want to you want to have this run to a good ground rod. Uh, then external speaker goes here, and a tuner connection here. It can use an FC40. Um, you know the the Yesu's external antenna tuner. FC40 was uh, if you're familiar with the FT857D, same tuner that worked with it. And again, a cooling fan. So let's get the rub bubble wrap off. And a speaker. And now look at that. There's the radio. Nice. I gotta tell you, it's heavy. It's it's heavy. The amplifier part is what, what's heavy. Now remember, this part comes off and you can take it portable using that portable battery. I'll be doing the initial operation with it, plugged in as a base station. Uh, so, you know, just know that everything I do on the front can be done portable. You will just have six watts of output power or 10 if you use something like a bio no 12 volt battery. Um, and six watts if you use this battery that snaps onto the back. Okay, so uh, stand by a moment. I'll get this thing powered up and we'll see it wake up. Okay, the FTX-1 Optima is sitting atop the Kenwood TS-890S. You guys who follow my channel regularly know that I have been shooting a tutorial series about the TS-890S for the S9 VIP level Patreon team members. Without them, you wouldn't see this video or, well, see, I'm, I think I'm approaching 800 videos. So they wouldn't exist without not only the S9 VIPs and, and the S7 executives, but especially those who I call long haulers who have supported the channel for multiple years. The S9 VIPs who have supported the channel for multiple years, um, they, they provide about 98% of the funding that helps me bring you these videos and, you know, helps me be able to bring you these videos with no bias. I don't have a horse in the race, okay? I just tell you the best for the money. If it happens to be Yesu, fine. If it happens to be Kenwood, fine. If it happens to be ICOM, fine, whatever. Uh, so I'm just approaching this from a completely 
honest uh, angle. I want to show you the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And these S9 VIPs and the S7s who have hung in there for multiple years, they've made that possible. So I call them long haulers. And the S9 VIPs will have access to the Kenwood TS890S videos. In fact, they're already watching them. And I think I released video number eight today, as a matter of fact, as I filmed this. And then um, they'll also have access to the additional videos related to this radio here, the FTX-1 Optima. Okay, so um, let me power up my power supply. There's an on button, I see it right there. I haven't read the manual yet, although I did uh, find it. It is, there's a, oh, well, it just powered right up. Uh, AFRF squelch, okay, over here. And AFRF squelch for there. Now you can see this popped up at 144, so that's going to be the 2 meter 70 centimeter side. And just like all good Yesus, the one on the right is HF. And they always wake up on 7 megahertz. Uh, looks like this is borrowed from the FT. Uh, 710. As a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and tell you, uh, this radio HF-wise, practically an FT710. It's a pure SDR over on that side, and uh, so this is a feature that came on the FT710 to let you know which VFO you're currently using, uh, because, you know, like the 710, you'll have an AVFO and a BVFO. So, uh, so you know, I... I Kind of from what I've read already, I may change my mind later, but what it looks like this radio is going to be is like an FTM 500 or so on the left and an FT710 on the right. So let me turn that down. That was the FM side. So you can see we've got a RX here. So this side's receive. This side is currently TXRX. So uh, that one can transmit and receive. This is just the way it wakes up. Very, very similar to the FT710 in looks. There's a function knob here. Let's see what happens if I press it. Oh, it's D level. But that doesn't take us to the function menu like I thought it would. Let me see if I long press. Ah, look at that, long press. You gotta know that these days. That Kenwood's the same way. So long press gets us into the function menu and it looks very similar to the function menu of the FT710, FTDX10, FTDX101. Slight variations I can see here and there, but uh, very similar. Okay, so there you go. I unboxed it, uh, powered it up. Uh, the next video I will uh, we'll get into listening with it, maybe and make some adjustments. And in the series, there will, of course, like I always do, there will be a video where I focus on the transmit audio parameters. And I'm going to trust that it'll act a lot like an FT710, but hey, we'll find out. Hey, thanks for watching videos on my channel. Again, thank you to our Patreon support team members who have supported the, the channel and my operation for long enough that I'm able to continue to do this work. There's quite a library of tutorials and written content available for the Patreon team members, articles that I've written. Uh, for example, the one I just released is uh, where does the S meter get its information from? How does that work? I've got another article regarding the final transistors that were used for the FTDX10, FT710, and then the FTDX101. They're different. We get into the weeds with some geeky stuff, but then also, too, there's just some practical information covering FT8, amplifiers, antennas, all sorts of things over on the Patreon platform. So Andrew Fairtech, and November 1, Yankee Lima Oscar, is one of those S9 VIPs, long haulers, who has made this video series possible for you to watch. So I hope you'll learn from it. I hope you found this helpful and informative. Not much in this one, unboxing it, powering it up. It was interesting that it powered up just by turning on the power supply. Let me see if it will, let me get out of that. Yep, long press the function knob, gets you out of the function menu. I'm going to long press the power button, and that turns it off. Interesting, though, that it just turned on. Cause, but you see, these radios, these are what I call soft start. When they have power available, even if they're off, there's a circuit in there, 
looking for this button to be, I guess, long press. Let's try it. Yeah. There's a circuit in there looking for that button to be long pressed, and then it will power up the radio. We've got HTs out like that now, so if you ever wonder why, well, I sit my HT, here's a bonus on this video. <laughs> I, I sit my, I charge my HT and I sit it on the bedside table and a week or two later, I come back and turn it on and I notice that the power in the battery has dropped a little bit, maybe a tenth or two or three volts. Well, that's because a lot of the HTs, and I'm, for example, the FT3, FT5, same thing. Is If the battery's hooked up, there's a microprocessor is looking for somebody to long press the power button. So there's always a little bit of, uh, it's called phantom drain, phantom drain from the battery. I like radios like the FT65 that has an actual click on off switch. So when it's off, it's really off. The FT270, which is my favorite HT I carry on soda outings, same thing, click, it's off. This is a soft start. You long press, if you tap it, it's lock or unlock. Okay, so careful there. It'll lock your VFO. But obviously long press turns it on, long press turns it off. Okay, again, hey, thanks for watching the videos. And if you'd like to become a Patreon team member so you can watch the rest of this series, go to patreon.com forward slash n 4 h &H. If you hang around for another 42 seconds, I'm going to acknowledge five of the Patreon team long haulers, and you will also see the address of how to join as a part of this ending. All right, 73 from N4H&H.